moment to keep contact with Libyans inside Libya? Uh, there is still some issue with getting visa, uh, but we have now established uh, contacts uh, with the authorities and uh, we have overcome these problems. So, no, it's quite easy. And coming from Cairo, there are several flights to Benghazi and from Tripoli. So, these, uh, these problems have been overcome. What are the, the main topics that you are dealing with at the moment uh, in supporting? in the framework of supporting civil society, for instance? First of all, we have to say that the Libyan civil society is comparatively small, but it's very dynamic. Uh, it has played a very important role in the revolution. And now Libya is uh, confronted with the challenge of uh, building uh, a state. They had a revolution, they had a state, but nobody really accepted the state, and now they're building the state. And civil society has a role to play here. And we are supporting uh, civil society organizations. The main issue in, in, in Libya, I think, is really education and training. Mm -hmm. They're very banal things, and, and we are doing this in the field of civil society. There is a certain component for uh, social media activism, and we're looking into also working together in a more traditional media sense. But this is the stuff we do, and we include also, this is important, the Libyans in international programs, that they get exposure, that they get interactions uh, with other partners of ours in the region and beyond the region. Mm -hmm. Martin, you have been last time in uh, Libya the week before before, yeah, and a couple of days ago, yeah, couple of days ago, you hosted a, a conference about uh, media regulation. Yeah. Um, what was the main issue that Libyans were interested in when it comes to media? Well, the main issue is that there are no rules existing. So there's a vacuum, there's a lack of uh, existing rules, and they have to, at one time, find out new rules, which really work out for the elections, mm -hmm. which will hopefully take place at the 7th of July. And on the other hand, they have no experiences, because 42 years of, of no rules, only dictatorship, means there's uh, uh, no history which they can uh, stick on. What does it mean for uh, support work now that there is no yeah, now tradition in, in having something which is similar to what has been built, uh, has to be built up now? Yeah. yeah we are we are working now in uh, a lot of cities, we are working with 10 trainers at this moment and uh, we are really starting from the scratch, there's nothing. So uh, that is really new for us uh, to have no history of journalism where we can hook on. So we have really to build on basic skills and to focus on the new uh, content of preparing people for elections mm -hmm. and this is really challenging. It's challenging for the journalists and challenging for the people mm -hmm. and the main thing is uh, it is a, it's a full state of rumors and the only uh, reliability can be uh, professional media and this is not existing. So we have a, a, a full case of rumors, a full box and it's open and it's every day is a new day and everybody is listening to something and it cannot be really verified and, and clarified and that's a big issue in front of the uh, elections. Is that your impression too that uh, th this all is very much floating uh, w and lacking still a certain stability which enables to build things up on a stone by stone? Yes, I mean you cannot compare Libya to such countries as Tunisia or Egypt uh, where there was an infrastructure and uh, the infrastructure is being somehow redesigned. No, uh, they are starting from scratch uh, uh, and uh, then you have also the external influences. Uh, in the media situation you have a very strong influence from the Gulf countries, one specific countries. Uh, some of the satellite stations which are playing an important role in Libya, they have moved outside, for instance, to Cairo because they couldn't find the staff in Libya. So they made a necessity out of the situation. Does that mean that the influence from, and, uh, and let's say in a positive way, the support from outside, because it is such a big vacuum, is that part of the problem or part of the solution? For me, it's part of the problem because um, everybody drops in. So you have, uh, you, of course, European solutions, you have Arab solutions, you have Chinese solutions. Everybody would like to offer a solution. And because uh, there is no own way, there is no own rule clarified, uh, it, is, it is an open discussion. It is but, not done. Uh, but how are, are the Libyans dealing w with all that advice they get now, all these people coming in, knowing quite well what they have to do? How are they dealing with it? 
My understanding with our target audience is we are very welcome. We are uh, welcome on the personal level, on the institutional level with our partners. And with this is very important. We as a foundation are also very welcome on the governmental level. We have good relations uh, with the Minister of Culture, who is also responsible for NGOs, civil society, and the media. They're very interested. They are very pro-European. I would even say they are very friendly to Germany. They have a high regard. We have established contacts with the University of Benghazi. And uh, what is uh, fascinating for us as a foundation, usually if we go to a country, the first question they ask, uh, how much money are you going to give us? In Libya, this is not the priority. They seem to have funds and they're really interested in know-how and our networks and the exchange of knowledge. And this is, of course, an interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. Now we are ahead of the, uh, of the elections and uh, obviously after the elections the situation might change slightly or uh, in a bigger way. Um, do you expect more stability after the elections and more possibilities to go to long-term work because the people remain the same in the same functions? Or do you expect less stability? Well, uh, I would say uh, the elections, uh, the outcome of the elections are one pillar. So without, there's no, uh, no success uh, in the future. But nobody knows what really will be the outcome. Can also be some uh, tribal Salafist influence, which we really don't like. But uh, it, if it's an election, it will be <laughs> the vote of the people. So we have, it's really an open, open question. Mm -hmm. I would also not, my, what, not uh, make a bet on the outcome of the election. There is a political process. They are starting a long road. What we hear and what we gather, there is a lot of activism. There is a lot of interest and this is fruitful and this is important. If you want to set up uh, somehow a democratic society and we can only wish them well. We have helped in training election observers. There are many other institutes who are supporting civil society development, political party development. Let's hold our fingers crossed that this will work out fine. There are, of course, many dangers. Mm. There is the issue of tribalism, there is the security issue, uh, there is the issue uh, of justice. Uh, I mean, the revolution was a very brutal revolution and many people are still demanding justice. There's no justice system. So there's piles of, tra of, 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 of problems, but let's be optimistic that they get it done. Mm. Thank you very much, Rund. What is the next activity or the next construction site you are launching in? Well, um, I will go to the uh, election date to visit our trainers and to to keep tracking contact keep contact track. and track so. you track with the people okay yeah. thank you very much Roland Manadus uh, regional director of uh, Friedrich Naumann Foundation based in Cairo in charge of the region and also for Libya thank you being with us and Martin Hilpert project manager for Libya at Deutsche Welle Academy thank you thank very you much